Good morning. I'm Reverend Stratford, and welcome to the new members class. I will be teaching your second uh, class on behalf of our pastor, Roderick Weathersby, and the first lady, LaShondra Weathersby. Uh, I would like to welcome you to the Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, we will be covering this morning uh, the book of Matthew. Uh, we'll be covering chapter 28, verse 19, which is the Great Commission, uh, is known as the Great Commission, that we give uh, to new uh, disciples. Uh, Jesus said to go and make disciples. Uh, and this was the charge that he gave his disciples uh, when he was resurrected, dead, and buried. And he, uh, he charged all his disciples to go out. And so we're going to cover that. These, uh, this particular verse in this passage is probably one of the, probably the most important uh, verses throughout our commission as being a born-again uh, believer of Jesus Christ. Uh, there are a few things that I, I certainly would like to lift up this morning. And uh, I would like to summon your senses, invite your attention to uh, chapter 28, verse 19. And I'll give some of the her historical context uh, of this particular uh, passage of Scripture. Uh, Jesus has just uh, gone to the cross. Uh, he's been resurrected. And so the women are going to the tomb. And so I think this is very, uh, very key uh, that we add them, uh, that the women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, that's what the Bible says, uh, they go to anoint Jesus' body, um, and this is the Sabbath. This is the first day after the Sabbath. Uh, but when they get there, they're surprised uh, that there had been an earthquake, um, a great earthquake, the Bible says. Um, the, in, the angel had descended from heaven. And when they got there, he was sitting, sitting on the rock. And so, but he told them to fear not. I know why you're here. Uh, you came uh, looking for Jesus. But the angel told them at that time that he's risen. And so he's risen just like he said that he would. And but for you to go to tell your disciples, and go tell the other disciples to meet him in Galilee. And so he had risen, and so the women were the first at the tomb. And so we see that in this particular uh, text. And so we see that this is very key. This is the historical background as to how we get there. Uh, but looking at the passage that we see it, and I'll just kind of read it, I want to go back and pick it, though. I want to read verse 19, and it goes, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Ghost. And so looking at that particular uh, passage, there are a few things that we look at first. The first thing that jumps out at me with this particular text is that this is a call. Uh, this is a calling uh, from, and I think that uh, a calling to. And so when we look at it, uh, when we are first saved, God is calling us out of the darkness into the light. And so uh, being or taking or partaking of Jesus's body, uh, of him, is first, there's a calling. Each one of us has uh, have a call on our life. And so uh, from my, basically from looking at this text and studying, um, it is basically known or speculated that 
There are basically three kinds of call, a divine calling, three kinds of divine calling. And when we get called out of the darkness uh, into the light, which is taking on the partaking of Jesus Christ, uh, being a Christian, is a divine calling. Uh, and so there are three divine calling. And I would say the first one is the universal call. Uh, the universal call uh, is a call to all people for salvation. So everybody in the universal call uh, would be considered uh, the, the salvation piece uh, is the universal call. And then there's a general call. The general call uh, is for Christians to love and to love one another. That was one what? This is great, great commandment is to love and love one another uh, as I have loved you. And so when we look at that particular scripture, it goes on uh, uh, to give us the last call is also God's specific call. And this is the one I think that most people grapple with uh, the, the divine uh, specific call, which is, what is my purpose? What is it? that God would have me do, what is it that why I'm here in this world? Because each one of us, uh, there is a specific uh, call on our lives that God has called each and every one of us to. Uh, but we have to discover it. And one of the ways of discovering that I was able through my studies and being a part of of, of most uh, being a not a pastor, but being one a reverend is to pray. Uh, one of the things I've found uh, in order to uh, some of the steps to find it out is to pray, pray to God. And so I'm so glad that you asked about how you discover it. Pray uh, through prayer and just simply ask God, say, God, what is it? that you would have me do. And most of the time, the thing that we like the most, I've, I've discovered in, in my studies, is when those things that we do the best and the things that we uh, might not necessarily always like, but some of the things that we do the best. And I offer, oftentimes, I, I disagree with my sister. Uh, we go back and forth on that. And she always says that, if you don't like it, then most of the time you won't do it well. But I push back a little bit on that because there's a lot of things that I do well that I may not necessarily like. Uh, but nine out of 10, if there is something that just comes to you second nature and everybody else is struggling uh, to do it and you do it like it's nothing, uh, I would say uh, I would take a long, hard look at that because that could very well be uh, the calling that God is trying to call you to, uh, to do that. Uh, but looking at the very first part of the text, uh, it said, it give, God gives a command. He says, go ye therefore and teach all nations. And so that's a direct co command to me that God is telling us to go teach. And so when we go teach, we are to what? To teach the people and to make disciples. And so this is one of the things that I found out in this text that uh, in Matthew 10, 6 and 7, he says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is what the, um, uh, the King James is saying. And ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand and has come near. And also he said in Mark 16, and so this great commission is recorded in all three gospels. It's recorded in Mark, um, Matthew, and Luke. God gives each one and they all were there. So you can tell that this is uh, something, uh, and that's why they call it synoptic gospels because all three gospels record that Jesus gave them this great commission. Uh, to do and to make disciples. And so this is what each Christian uh, is to do. When you take on 
uh, the change or you become a Christian. Uh, it is not just to come in and sit down. Uh, we're always uh, looking to, to grow the kingdom. And so this is what this Great Commission is about. But not only that, when you uh, take on the change and you become a new born-again Christian, he said, baptize them. When we make disciples, he's an all-nation. Because when, when this particular passage uh, in Matthew 10, uh, 6 and 7, Jesus did not want his disciples to go into Samaria uh, and, and Judea and some of the, uh, in the uh, and go to the land of the Gentiles. At that time, when he said this in Matthew 10, 6 and 7, they were not to go. But when he gives this great commission that changed, he wants all nations. And so what he's saying is that not only Jews will be added to the kingdom, but he's also adding the Gentiles. So, uh, and that was always God's intent. God's intent was never to just solely uh, have just the Jews bring the gospel, the good news. He was going to bring uh, all people, but the Jews were going to be the ones who actually lead or lead the people uh, to uh, to Jesus and to to, uh, to Christianity. And so this is what uh, this particular passage is, is speaking to. And so uh, lastly, uh, he said not only do we want to bring uh, and preach the gospel to all nations, but to baptize. Baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy, Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And so this is uh, the great commission and the great commandment that he gave that we are to do that. But when we baptize, make sure that we're baptizing. And so he sent his Holy Spirit 50 days, after, 50 days later after he was resurrected. But before he ascended into heaven, this is his uh, this is the call that he gave them. And he wanted them to know uh, before he went to heaven that this is what I'm calling you to do. As my disciples, uh, I have taught you. And as I, as I have taught you, uh, this is what I want you to do uh, for those who partake of his body. I hope this has uh, enlightened everyone. And I thank you uh, for being here with us today and being a new member welcome to mount pleasant where we are where we are rooted in the will of god relevant in his word and real in worship thank you and i'm signing out river strap